I welcome all of you to this first webinar for the Reinventing Democracy in the Digital Era project, a project funded by the United Nations Democracy Fund. We are doing this webinar just a few weeks before our first face-to-face -face structured democratic dialogue for European participants, and which is going to take place on the mountains of Cyprus during the first week of February. But before we begin, let me introduce myself. I'm Yannis Lauris, and I'm founding member of Future World Center, the organization that has envisioned and is implementing this project. My background is in medicine, engineering, and computing, but I describe myself more as a social entrepreneur. Like for anyone involved in this project, same for me, you can find information about us in this brilliant system that we have created, which we call the Open Encyclopedia. We anticipate that this wiki will facilitate communication and interactions. It is also a practical demonstration of the power of transparency. Please visit these pages as often as you can at reinventingdemocracy.info. Let me also give the stage to the two persons here in Cyprus who are working full time on this project to introduce themselves. In future webinars, we will invite many others to introduce themselves, both from Cyprus as well as from our international liaisons in Africa, Asia, America, etc. Hello, my name is Maria and I'm the day-to-day -day coordinator of this project. I am probably the person with whom you will be communicating the most and I'm at your disposal for questions and help. My name is Nicolina and I'm the day-to-day -day assistant coordinator for this project. So I am the person with whom you will be communicating for everything that has to do with the organization of the events before and after your arrival to Cyprus. Reinventing democracy in the digital era is not a typical project. It is more an initiative, a youth movement. The youth of today are the owners of tomorrow. They should therefore have a sense of ownership of the future. But they don't. Our team recognizes the fact that the youth are those who suffer the most. While the older generations, like my generation, have the power and the means, the younger generations are stuck with dreams and unemployment. This alone explains their frustration and the fact that many of them refuse to participate in elections and also in many other decision-making processes. The key objective of reinventing democracy in the digital era is exactly what its title says, to design new systems of governance that are truly participatory and exploit the fact that we have billions of mobile devices around us and we use them for everything except for political participation. The objective is to increase youth participation and collaboration in decision-making processes with regards to democratic governance by empowering young people from across the world to invent and propose new, innovative and concrete actions aiming at reinventing democracy by taking advantage of what the digital era has to offer. Reinventing democracy in the digital era is not a typical project. It is more an initiative, a youth movement. The youth of today are the owners of tomorrow. They should therefore have a sense of ownership of the future. But they don't. Our team recognizes the fact that the youth are those who suffer the most. While the older generations, like my generation, have the power and the means, the younger generations are stuck with dreams and unemployment. This alone explains their frustration and the fact that many of them refuse to participate in elections and also in many other decision-making processes. The key objective of reinventing democracy in the digital era is exactly what its title says, to design new systems of governance that are truly participatory and exploit the fact that we have billions of mobile devices around us and we use them for everything except for political participation. The objective is to increase youth participation and collaboration in decision-making processes with regards to democratic governance by empowering young people from across the world 
to invent and propose new, innovative and concrete actions aiming at reinventing democracy by taking advantage of what the digital era has to offer. Now, the question is, how are we going to achieve such an ambitious goal? This is where you come in. You are the hope for a better world. The project is global. This means that we will be organizing structured democratic dialogues across the globe, but the resources are limited. So we have five week-long dialogues that will take place, one per continent, with 20 participants each. This adds up to 100 core participants, as we call them. But in parallel, we are organizing dialogues anywhere in the world where you or your networks invite us. And of course, we use technology to engage many others in what we call virtual dialogues. The social media is our vehicle to spread the word. So we expect everyone, you, us, to be active in these spaces. Let's go through the design of the project point by point. We have those participants who will travel to certain locations, stay for a whole week, and work intensively for the project. We said we call them core participants. Core participants receive significant support and attention. At the same time, we expect them to work hard both before and after the actual event and to take this opportunity in their hands to make a change. If you are a core participant, you must secure support from your community. We expect a lot from you. For now, let us focus on the things that are most important. Each core participant may have up to three mentors. We want you to choose one science mentor who will help you learn more about the theory and practice of the science of dialogic design. This is the science on which the methodology we will be using throughout the project to facilitate the dialogues is grounded. We also want you to choose one media mentor who will help you deal with promoting your messages. This media mentor is expected to help you identify and contact media organizations, prepare media releases, review your messages, keep you alert with the timely preparation of your video clips and campaigns. Finally, we will assign to you a peer mentor. This might be a person who is even younger than you, a person who dared and achieved something significant in her or his life. The job of the peer mentor is to inspire you, to make you do things you can do, but you may not believe you are able to. I encourage everyone to read more about the roles and duties of mentors in the Reinventing Democracy Encyclopedia at www.reinventdemocracy.info. The second thing we expect from you is to secure 10 other young change makers who are willing to participate in virtual dialogues, but also team up with core participants in implementing local projects. We also expect that you demonstrate to us that you have access to whatever is around you. We don't expect that they like you or that you have power over them, but we do expect that you can identify people and organizations in your country or in your region, which we can together engage to promote your ideas and your projects. For example, we want you to identify all media organizations and investigate their interests, find contact persons and journalists. The same goes for youth organizations, governmental and non-governmental organizations, and any other agent who might have a role in supporting our overall key objective. Probably the easiest way to explain this is by saying that we expect you to be brave, to contact those who have the means and request their support, even if you know they will not provide it. We want you to produce many short video clips with your ideas, your messages and your stories. I am sure you have heard the phrase, the medium is the message. Finally, we expect that you will do your homework, study the ideas of others, discuss with them on the internet, 
study the videos produced by all mentors and other supporters. To become a soldier of peaceful change, you still need weapons. Your weapon is your shared knowledge and shared understanding of the situation in which we are all embedded. The project has space and roles for many other actors in society who are interested to get involved. Important personalities may place this project under their auspices. Universities, NGOs or other organizations may organize their own events and place them under our umbrella. They might also implement their own structured dialogues with your support, engaging their own people and their own communities. To learn more about all these roles, please go to the Reinventing Democracy Encyclopedia and choose the section Details about the project at the top right of the page. In this third part of our first Reinventing Democracy in the Digital Era webinar, we will go through some logistical issues related to the project. The first important question is, how can someone join this wonderful project? Well, like we said in the previous part, the project is open. We have many roles and many options. There are several ways to contribute and benefit from this initiative. The best is to study them in the Reinvent Democracy Encyclopedia. Since the most straightforward way is to be a co-participant in one of the global dialogues, let us talk more about that. We will be organizing five dialogues in five different parts of the globe. For each one of these dialogues, we will be selecting 20 to 25 participants from countries in that continent. We call these participants core participants because they are the core of the project. They will be spending a whole week together, practically all costs covered. They will have the opportunity to brainstorm, discuss and learn from each other. The physical interactions are expected to create friendships and build up their desire to change the world and their commitment to work on their ideas. So if you would like to be one of these 100 core participants, don't lose any time, apply now. Encourage all your friends to do the same. In order to apply, you have to study the requirements carefully. We invite those who truly aspire to make a change to apply. Your application must be complete. You should talk to us, producing a short video clip in which you explain why you want to participate in whatever activities you are involved and what are your thoughts about the subject. I will now call Maria to explain this process in greater detail. Hello, my name is Maria and I'm the day-to-day -day coordinator of this project. I am probably the person with whom you will be communicating the most and I'm at your disposal for questions and help. I will now take you through the application process. The process is very similar whether you are applying to be a core participant, a shadow participant, a mentor, any type of liaison, supporter or researcher. The links are on the home page of the Invent Democracy Encyclopedia. Now let's take the example for a core participant. Choosing the links, it takes you to the page that explains everything. There is also a link to take you directly to the application form now. Please don't go there if you are not ready. Make sure you have everything because the form does not allow you to save your work. Absolutely necessary requirements for the applications that are central to the project are the video clip that you need to prepare, the 10 shadow participants list, and the contact and support in your country. In the next part, you will listen to my colleague Nicolina talking about the logistics of the collaboratory. My name is Nicolina and I'm the day-to-day -day assistant coordinator for this project. So I am the person with whom you will be communicating for everything that has to do with the organization of the events before and after your arrival to Cyprus. I will be at your disposal for any questions or help. So today I will take this opportunity to introduce you to the logistics of our first structured democratic dialogue. As you already know, it is going to take place in a small city at the mountains of Cyprus called Blatres. One evening we will visit Limassol, the biggest city of Cyprus, have a long inspirational walk at the promenade and dinner in a famous local restaurant. On the last day, we will visit one of the oldest theatres in the world, the Gurion Theatre. There, each one of you will be asked to stand in the center of the theater and repeat two or three of your major ideas and we will record you. 
Our aspiration is for these video clips to go viral. Let's talk about the traveling arrangements. All the core participants have received an email regarding the traveling arrangements. Those who are eligible for the $268 traveling reimbursement may now proceed in purchasing their ticket to Larnaca or Paphos International Airport. You will receive the amount of $268 in cash, in euros, during the collaboratory in Cyprus. As soon as you purchase your ticket, please send us your details so that we make arrangements for your local transportation in Cyprus. Those who have requested full financial support, please let us know about the cheapest fare. Your request will be sent for approval and you will be informed as soon as possible. Now, if you require a visa to travel to Cyprus, please let us know by Tuesday, the 19th of January, by sending us the contact details of the embassy you are applying for and the name of the representative. Future World Center would provide assistance. However, you will be responsible for your own visa arrangements. You are expected to arrive on the 7th and depart on the 13th of February. The project covers accommodation from the 7th to the 13th of February. But if you like to extend your stay in Cyprus, you will be responsible for your own accommodation arrangements. Finally, uh, both the shadow participants and the core participants must download, download the mobile application idea quiz from the Apple or Android store and submit their ideas there. When you download the application, you have to identify the dialogue reinventing democracy in the digital era and submit your ideas by the 5th of February.